everyone, and welcome to We Know Scripted TV's coverage of the sex lives of college girls. That's right. We have come back to talk episodes three and four of season three. I am your host, Sasha Joseph, of course, joined by our Franklin the Fox, question mark. Mm. Uh, Chappelle is here. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I'm more of a I'm more of a dog than a fox, Sasha. Oh, fair, fair. Yeah, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, you know, just in this context. Yeah, in, in this context. But I have so many issues with what we saw in these two episodes. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you about them. Um, I know we're recording these in batches, yes. uh, but it's really hard to not keep going. I like I want to finish the season at this point. Yeah. I know it's just y'all. We're we're trying. Okay, we're. I did end up watching episode five. Oops. But Ooh. I know it's just, but it was nothing like outrageous. So we're okay. Um, and it's not like going to crowd anything that I'm going to talk about, but either way, it's just, this is such a good show. I'm enjoying it online. I've seen folks being like, Oh, the show has changed. The show has changed. Whatever. I think it's really? evolving. Really? I didn't think the show was I felt like this is the, this is the show I signed up for. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I feel like we're we're going up if anything. I liked it. I like mm -hmm. these two episodes so you. much. Uh I'm loving these characters still. Uh you know, like they, they and they're doing stuff that I think is very true to form in these episodes. Uh but you know, we still got some shenanigans and I think that yep. this group is prime for shenanigans. We've got a new character who we were dead ass wrong about, you know, completely about the new roommate. And no, so I fell um, on my ass. Like <laughs> yeah, I was like, who is this lady? And so um we got a lot to talk about. I'm very excited. Yes. So so let's get into it. You know what? Let's start at the start. Okay. Casey Baker is here. Casey Lynn Baker. Uh, I, okay. She does have monogrammed everything. And we mm -hmm. did get a YouTube comment saying like it was KL. So mm -hmm. shout out to you. Um, you know, and, and listen, put put all this stuff in the comments. That's where we get like yes. excited to keep talking. And yes, yeah, she does have monogrammed everything. And it she's played by the actress whose name is Gracie Lawrence. I have never seen her, um, or maybe I have because she's in the movie where the Millers, um, really? and all these like random the and the Good Wife. Where's Jason Reed? <laughs> right, that's but, how I it. Yes, but apparently, like I just looked up her thing. She was in. Did you hear about the Morgans? Which I've definitely watched. Oh, so see, I don't, I don't know. know. It's just any of. Mm -mm. The Sarah Jessica either. Parker and Hugh Grant movie where they have to go into witness protection. Um, oh, mm -mm. I don't know oh, any of this. It's a fun oh. movie. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so she's it, apparently in that too. Um, but I am still Fancy Fencerton when it comes okay. to Casey, even after two episodes. I want to just lead with that. Okay, so my my only issue that I have with Casey, yes. we get a new girl, and mm. I feel like, and this might just be me, like just kind of big yeah. brain in this, but it feels like they took. Layden story and just kind of like watered it down a little bit and gave us mm -hmm. Casey because I felt like there's a lot of Layden in Casey, you know, like, the uh, like a lot. Well, that and just kind of like it's all it's, it's not as judgy, but it's definitely the same vibe. She's very much got like the I have it all together. Oh, I'm good yeah, at everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of Layden's vibe. Is that like, no, yeah. I'm good. What are you talking about? I don't get rattled. I'm I'm perfect. I, I don't have anything to worry about. And then the fact that we find out that she's a singer, I was like. I feel like this was Layton's storyline. And when they found out she was leaving the show, they had to retcon it and be like, oh, okay, now we got Casey Lynn doing... Because I could definitely see Layton being like, you know, I want to be in the fall musical, especially with us knowing that Renee Rapp is a singer, you know? And so, yeah, 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 yeah. That, so that's oh, how that's I feel. Fair. Okay. Yeah, yep. that's, that's how I felt. Like, they were trying to kind of okay. like... They already had it written out. And then they were like, okay, how can we flex it to make it fit a new character? And I... I don't know episode the episodes that we have with her i enjoy because she has some bumps in the road already mm -hmm. but you know she seemed pretty put together but like all of these characters she's flawed and i'm enjoying her now why are you on the fence about casey lynn yeah i just she's not vibing with mm -hmm. me currently and and not to say that things might change i i'm i'm okay with that but i just feel like in these two episodes i think her lines are very smart like they've written her well um right when the whole theater nerd thing happened she's like oh thank you so much like that's the nicest thing and she's nice nasty right all mm -hmm. of those things i enjoyed that i think the show needed a little bit of flavor in that way but 
what's the story here that she's a theater mm. kid um that you know is gonna probably end up with that theater guy mm. uh, and i feel like we're we've missed a really big dynamic care we've lost sorry a really big dynamic character to to then like bring someone in i just feel like they should have just left it at three girls yeah, I think they wanted to use that storyline with Layton for sure. Like, I really think that, like, you, we could see a world where Layton, because she's perfect and she's good at everything. Whereas, like, Layton is like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go be in the fall, you know, in the fall play for whatever yeah. reason. Just make it up. And uh, and then she goes to do it. And, of course, like La Casey Lynn in this episode, uh, the professor is not vibing with her because we know the yeah. same thing about Layton. She's good at everything, but she doesn't let anybody in. And so mm -hmm. I could definitely see a world where she's like, no, you're very performative, but it doesn't hit right. And so I think yeah. they're giving that to Casey Lynn and we're okay. going to have to see her struggle. But we haven't, like you said, we haven't sat with her for two seasons and got to build the journey where we know there's more to her that that's deep down inside. Like to these episodes, we don't even know if there's more to Casey Lynn than what she's mm -hmm. giving us, you know, uh, She's from Charleston, so that's where we get the nice nasty, yeah. you know. Exactly. Um, and, you know, <laughs> but as, aside from that, uh, the other thing that we have that we really find out is that um, she was saving herself. She had a promise ring, mm -hmm. and it didn't work out. And I was like, damn. Yeah. And, and again, we knew that was going to happen because we immediately meet her, and she has moved from Duke, and she's uh, transferred from Duke, and she's been with her boyfriend since the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And there's a promise ring, not an engagement ring, right? And then um, she's just like, okay, so what's all of your boyfriend's names? And then she's like, oh, feminism. Ew. Basically. No, is she said, I'm a feminist. I'm Because I'm a girly girl. That and counts. A, a parent. You know what? Who am I? <laughs> you know, who am I? I'm just a she, woman. She's I, not just passing the Bechdel test. <laughs> oh, in this first episode, she's definitely not, right? Like, all she no. talks about is Calvin, her boyfriend. That's yes. all she ever talks about in the first episode. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the show is really telegraphing in a way that maybe yeah. this relationship is going to be not the relationship she thinks it is. I mean, Sasha, we worked in college settings. We've been to college. We talk about college. Yes. If someone tells you they've been with their boyfriend since the seventh grade <laughs> and then they went to separate colleges and now you're, you, if, if your friend told you that they were going to switch schools to go be with their boyfriend, just knee-jerk reaction. A laugh like Stop. very loudly. What do you mean? You're about to up in your life yeah. to go be with this man. He's not up in his life to go be with you. And I feel like the vibe of Duke versus Essex is probably so different because she we we know that Casey's a pageant girl. Yeah. Duke probably has multiple pageant girls versus yeah. like an Essex, which I'm sure has pageant girls, but not in the same way. I mean, Layton had to leave Essex because the math program wasn't good enough. Duke is right. a good school. You know, I'm kind of like, yeah. you transferred out of Duke to go to Essex sounds kind of like, I won't say it's a downgrade, but I mean, what are you doing here? You know, are you, what's your major? You know what I'm saying? I, I need to ask her more questions because are you really just sw switching schools up into your whole life to be with this man? Stand up. And we knew, up. right? We knew that he was going to be useless because yeah. no... Long distance relationships as 18 year olds, but why are we doing it? Why? That's like, I, guess, what I, want to know. I guess if you feel like you found your true love, then why do you keep looking? But also, come on, y'all, just give yourself a chance. You know, if it's real love, it'll come back, it'll come back. You know, and the thing is like, no, I would never do this, but I feel like maybe is there like a certain level of like cognitive dissonance that comes with a long distance relationship? Oh, like mm, you might be doing what you need to do over there and not well, over here. I mean, well, you know, she she's got her promise ring at Duke and she's expecting Calvin to be upholding the promise ring where he is. Mm -hmm. uh, and we find out very quickly that Kimberly is like, hey. I know that guy. He was hooking up with somebody last year. And at first, she sounds like she's unsure. But yeah. throughout the episode, she sounds more and more sure. Like, no, nah, no. Nah. Calvin definitely be outside. He be in the streets. And uh, I don't think and that's just the vibe. Is ready. Yeah. yeah. And that's the vibe he was giving. Yeah. Like, outside. Outside vibes. Uh, but, I mean, here's the question. Kimberly mm -hmm. knows this. Or at least thinks she knows this. At first, she's like, I think we should tell Casey Lynn. They you just met this girl. <laughs> Not Kimberly. Did yeah, kooky. Do you do you agree with Kimberly's first assess assessment that when she realized who Calvin was, not when she saw him at the party, but when she was like, I think I saw him last year, should she have told Casey Lynn then? So here's my toxic reason 
I would tell because you pissed uh -huh. you're rude. So I'm like, oh, do you're doing it to get at Casey Lynn. Yeah, I mm. at, least at the end of the day, I think I'm doing the right thing anyway. So, but the fact that you've been rude to me, this just makes it better. But was she rude? Yeah, you gotta see. That's why I like talking about these type of shows with you because I know, like, you know, you understand girl language, like the hidden yes. girl language. To me, I hope. Casey, I do. Yeah. To me, Casey Lynn, she wasn't really rude. It's just that everything that she didn't like was everything that her roommates were, and it was just like she doesn't know that about them. So she's like, "Oh, where are all your boyfriends?" She doesn't know that none of them have them. She's no, like, no, no. <laughs> "No girl is that dumb." <laughs> and she, she did, uh, oh. She, oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So you don't have a, you know, I mean, because remember her whole life is she's been with this guy since seventh grade, mm -hmm. you know, so she's never known, like her friends probably all got boyfriends that they be with. Matter of fact, she probably ain't got no friends. She probably just got Calvin. So she gets here and thinking, I'm sure these girls are also waiting for uh, the guy, you know, and they both have promise rings and they're saving themselves. And then <laughs> these girls are all like laughingly joking about hooking up with, you know, mascots. I just think mm -hmm. she's, you know, I don't think she knows she's being rude to these people. I think you are very sweet and nice. <laughs> bless your heart. Yes, bless your heart and everyone else's because there's no way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just, I don't think that's true. And the reason I say that is because she just keeps, the, the, when, when a girl does, oh, that means no, she's not, she knows what she's oh. saying. Yeah. Oh. And she's just like, she's just like, trying not to be rude so she's just being like oh okay mm, like that she, oh, oh, you know okay, I mean? oh, okay. Yeah. oh okay okay that's yeah. what that means thought so thoughts so. i thought so okay. Correct. <laughs> okay so because she just said too many things that were shady mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh okay. it, the one thing i will say that uh i'll give it to her is because you know, she does figure out that Calvin's a cheating ass line dog. Um, and she gets on Tinder and the Tinder moment, right? When she's like, Oh, is it a 250? A lot of likes. That part felt like, oh, I really don't know. Um, oh. but everything else, she's very pointed, and you can't tell me otherwise. Because the way she drags those theater kids. Okay, here's the thing. I felt her in this moment. I also felt like, okay, first of all, Get him if, Peter kids. if this was Layden, we wouldn't even be saying nothing about it because Layden is the definitely okay. the type of person to say like, oh no, I'm not a, the like, <laughs> I, I'm a better singer and performer than the rest of them, but God, dear God, I could never be a theater kid. That is Layden's vibe, okay? Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I was like, I'm picking up a lot of the same kind of DNA between the two of them, but I put it like this, when you're a part of a community or an organization, to you, it's not dumb because you're a part of it. But yeah. to other people, it still be stupid. And so, like, for me, I was in the marching band. You can't tell people <laughs> who were in the HBC marching band that we weren't just, like, the coolest kids around. But Fair. at the same time, people be like, oh, you were in the band. You know, like, oh, okay. But at the same time, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not like the other band kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of like... That's you the vibe. Kinda, <laughs> right, I'm, like, I'm like, listen, the band you know and the band I know are not the same. Stop it. And I think that's the vibe she was trying to give because she was not wrong about the kids. They do be yeah. extra. Yeah. That's okay. No, it... Again, in India, I was a theater kid. Um, mm -hmm. Your girl was my Eliza and my fair lady. Yeah. Uh, but there is definitely a stereotype, I will say, right, of theater kids that can be a lot. They're extra. They, they're yeah. theater. They're performative. It, we like that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why I feel like that together um, it isn't wrong. It's just she's so mean. She she just it's like she doesn't have like uh like she just doesn't have a filter where it's like uh the thing that says hey don't say that that could become off that could come mm -hmm. off as rude she doesn't really see it as rude if it's, she just sees it as true and so she's like no what what are you talking about I don't I don't really have any, why would I why would I be a theater kid like thank you for nothing nope. again if this was Layton we wouldn't even blink twice because Layton yeah, comes out fair. and I think it's because we have two seasons of Layton being like no this is who I am I am judgy I am mm -hmm. judgy. I am, uh, uh, you know, pretentious and I don't care. And so when she does things like that, we're like, it's a part of her charm. Whereas with yeah. Casey, then we're like, we don't even know you like that, girl. And you just showed up here and you're just like yeah. being mean to our girls. I don't like that. Yeah, we don't like that. I don't that. like that. No. Yeah. And when she's like, Bella, you look really good and I'm not just lying. <laughs> yeah, she said, I mean it this time. I was like, oh, okay. She she wasn't wrong. Bella did look really good in that moment. Um, uh, but she, yeah, but um, yeah, they they end up going to an Omega party again, 
And uh, you know, uh, this is where this is where they find out that for sure that he's a hundred percent cheating on her, you know. And they barely know. Uh, and then she's doing a self-care night at home alone, you know, because like hashtag feminism. Mm-hmm. And then she has to show up in the worst, like worst of the worst looking. At least she didn't have horrible glasses on. Yeah, yeah, she took the glasses off. But that's it. To, yeah. Cause to me, that's the final boss. Me. Mm-hmm. Because when I saw you, I have the ugliest glasses. <laughs> Cause my my like prescription is so high. Uh-huh. Like, you just soda bottles. Um, even after paying, they're still like fat. To you know, paying to thin them down. So it's just to me, I still think she look cute. I mean, she had those highlight things in her hair still though. I mean, like, lady, you can't come to the party the dressed foil like that. Was still in the hair. Yeah. But Kimberly was the one who told her to come through. And, yes. you know, at first it seemed like she wasn't going to do it. But I was trying to figure out, okay, what's the drama here? Like, you, we see him cheating. You have a you have a camera phone, right? Yeah. Like, at this point, if you really wanted to prove it. Because, you know, sometimes right. you, get, you do the thing where somebody's like, they don't believe you. Or what if she got there and they're not doing it anymore? And now you're like, no, oh, you got to believe me. For real. I, I saw it. But it's 2024. Just take a picture. You know, Video, quick, you know, hell. Yeah, if you're gonna snitch, she's gonna be like, "That's AI." <laughs> if she's that much in denial, don't tell her nothing else. Let her. Have, nope, at that point, you gotta let her go. Zip it, because yep. yeah. he starts calling her crazy, and mm-hmm. then he's like, "Calm down." First of all, the whole party is getting blew up. Yeah, if calm that, down. If anyone says that to me, why would he tell her to calm down? Like you know, like I don't even. I know he had to say it. But like he has to know that's like a dead nation button, right? That's the opposite. He doesn't of... care. You know he doesn't care. He doesn't give a damn. No, no. And he should, because she's ready to make a scene. Yeah. And th- again, this is why I think Casey's had the best lines this all of these two episodes. Because then she goes, you were the only one in a long-distance relationship, right? Oh, I'm so sad for you, not for me. And then he's he goes, yeah, I also, she goes, did you have sex? And then he he basically implies yes, and that his pastor dad forgave him. I don't think that's how that works. His ugly priest dad forgave him, so yes. she should forget about it too. It's so funny. And then she goes, and that thing you're insecure about, yeah, it's weird. See, that's why you can't tell women nothing because the first time they get mad at you, look at Remy Ma and Papoose. Okay, she out here making, she talking about mess magnets, everyone. <laughs> right, she talking about, about all the things, the nasty things that he like in the bedroom. I'm like, Remy, you was there too. You ain't had no Who issue was with doing it, babes. Right, lady, lady, ma'am, <laughs> ma'am. How you gonna throw up in this man's face when he had thrown up in your face? But you go really, you ain't had no issue with it when y'all was together. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Yep. Mm. Oh my god. Remy. 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 (laughs) Literally, Remy. (laughs) Did you see that tweet? Sorry, this is so not about this, but did you see that tweet where someone said Papoose really like has a type where he always is dating someone that uh that will go look at what's going on and will Mm -hmm. go check out the noise downstairs. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. That's 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 him. That's what he does. And uh and I was like, he's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. But the point is, yeah, again, I think Kimberly is written really well. It's just I am not connecting <laughs> at mm, all. I, I liked her. I like her. I, I don't know. I, I always I, I think I like this archetype of character where it's like they're, they're perfect. I always like it. Like when Anissa showed up on uh Never Have Ever, I was like, yes. I love Anissa. Because it's kind of mm-hmm. like, no, she doesn't, like, sure, she has her flaws that we will find out about and, like, her things she, she works about. But I like anybody who presents perfect uh, yeah. because later on you will get the layers, right? And so I like it, especially when they're a hard shell to crack. Like, because you would think the easy things about them will take them out, right? Because this should have been a deal. Like, this should have broke her. And in the very next episode, she doesn't even talk about Calvin anymore. She's moving on. Yeah, that that's why I like that. I think I will grow to like her because she's smart lines and she's actually very strong. Yeah. And, and you're right that there is some perfection is like in a good way to her as well. Um, I just think that there's now zero queer representation in the main girl so far. And mm-hmm. uh, it's all gone down to like the recurring characters instead of the show leads. So that's unfortunate. 
That's fair. That's fair. Um, because that's that's her whole storyline for the two episodes, right? Like she does the Calvin thing, and then she, uh, of course, uh, you know, is around while they're doing the other shenanigans. But she's her thing is the main. Her main thing is the play, and she wants to prove to her professor that, uh, you know, sh- that making her like casting her as the old woman is going to be a mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so it's not it's not the deepest storyline, but I think there's stuff there. You know, I think we we have time to work with it. I don't know how many seasons of this show is gonna get, but I'm sure by the next in the next couple of seasons or so, we'll probably get like Casey Lynn as a part of the crew. Yep, yep, hundred percent, hundred percent. And like I said, I see the vision. It's just like currently, I'm just like okay, like I I don't know that she's giving a lot. Um, and the the second layer to her right is that she is a theater kid, like we talked mm-hmm. about. And she meets Cooper, uh, who is a theater hottie. And she, uh, she's very much like, no, I'm a pageant girl. Pageant girls are better than theater kids. See and what they I'm have- saying? Since when? You know, you made that this up. Is crazy. We all watch Toddlers and Tiaras. <laughs> and they're all nuts. All of these little subgroups are all crazy what? in their own way. Yeah. Like, how Reality are you looking down TV on theater kids? Fools. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. We're Wait, all crazy. Are you kidding me? Look at us. Um, why are we so freaking out over TikTok lives? Anyway, but <laughs> but it's just she's like mm, pageants have done more for United States than theater. It's stop. Pageants gave us Taylor Hill, and I will never and I will never say anything bad about that because of that. And but honey boo boo, right? Whew. For every, every Taylor, there's a honey boo boo out there, you know. Uh, but, how dare but, she, you. but she made it up. She made it up. Yes. But that's that's what I'm saying. All these little subgroups all look down on the other subgroups. You we know? got Brianna and then, Chopra because of pageant, too. That's Miss World. Look, pa- the pageants mm. are doing the things. I'm just yep. saying. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, she, she doesn't have a, a, a big land to stand up. But I, I think uh, this Cooper thing, right? We know she's yes. trying to get back in the, in the saddle and start dating. Do you mm-hmm. think it's too fast, though? She dated this man since the seventh grade. And she had a long-distance relationship. And she traveled across the world for him, basically like switch schools for him, all kinds of stuff, and just broke up with him roughly, let's say, let's say a week has passed maybe in time, right? I feel I like you said it on this time. She, well, oh, uh, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> That's never been my mantra. First of all, how dare you, liar. Uh, <laughs> the best way to get over someone is under someone else. So fair. I don't know what she's, you're talking about. She's on the dating apps. When yeah, she said it, that she felt like they're desperate to be on the dating apps. I was like, I don't want to call nobody desperate, but I have never been on a dating app. I just, re- I just oh, refuse. For you, it's just no. It's just a. I just like kind of like I just don't like to put myself out there like that. That's just not yeah, my style. Yeah, I know, like, don't. En- I didn't enjoy dating apps, and I never mm-hmm. met anyone like great. But I know many people that met their husbands on it, so it is what yeah. it is. But yeah, if it works, um, it works. No. Got to put yourself out there. I went, yeah. It's just you gotta pick the right dating app. It's not for that's me. the thing. Nope. Hinge, fine, good enough for me. Um, but I just went on one nice date. Let's be honest. <laughs> I've only been on two dating app dates ever. So stupid. Not but for me. No, it's just and dating in 2024, you are the strongest soldier. In, in the ghetto. <laughs> what did Nini say? The ghetto. The ghetto. Ooh, the ghetto. The ghetto. Yeah. So I, I, I just feel like if you're in college, why do you need dating apps? But you know, we old. Cause right. They probably own the apps in college now. Buffet. Right. In college, I feel like you don't need the like, you don't yeah. need the app to do the introduction because you have so many different ways of meeting people. You're surrounded by people all the time. Yes. Um, but I also think that like it's 2024, like you said, we're in a technological mm-hmm. age where it's like, okay, why wouldn't I join an app? You, you would be on an app to do everything else you do. So why would dating be the only thing that Fair. you don't do on an app? Fair. You know? But you know what I mean? Don't you like organically meet people? Am I just like, am I old? Mm, I think so. I think we're old. Because you're okay. You know what? Yeah, because what Twitter did for us. Right, right. We we turned Twitter into a dating app in a way. Yeah, because there. But that's because we're showing our age. First of all, yeah. we're still calling we're still calling it Twitter. But also, the dating apps weren't popping we're like that when we were growing up. You know, so this is, it wasn't the thing. No, no. Um, I yeah, I just feel like what I that's why my name was Fun Size. But it's just Twitter. What well, you're right. Okay, so I can see that because you would meet at a party once, somehow find each other's Twitter, and then, then Twitter, meet- and then evolve to Snapchat and Instagram. Right. You know, so like that you could use apps today. But yeah. I just think I, okay. I've never been on an actual app that was built for dating. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, I my LinkedIn you. got a little. My LinkedIn got a little much for a little bit, but it was aside from that, <laughs> I've never been. Listen, you gotta find you a nice professional woman oh, in these streets these days. You know, okay. 
See if they got oh, that Excel God. certification. And this, yeah. and this, and this. Oh, no, I love that. Uh, but yeah, so either way, it's just, it's very interesting. And, and her and Cooper are obviously going to be a thing. I, we don't know the extent of it, but I'm excited because mm-hmm. uh, he seems to like really be the only one that challenges her currently because she's telling Kim, Kimberly, smile more. Like, sh- sh- stop. What are we doing here? Well, she and, wants people to think she has friends. And if Kimberly's walking around looking all muggy all the time, she's like, okay, well, if you're going to be around me, at least look happy to be here. <laughs> and she needs to make her ex like Calvin jealous by being on the like the lead of the school play. I get it, girl. Good I mean, yeah, make, making them jealous by being the lead of the school play and getting a boyfriend probably won't hurt, you know? And, and you know what? That I can get behind. Casey for okay uh <laughs> yes definitely been there where I've been fueled by like I need to be in the spotlight so that he mm. sees me I don't even want him back but ne- I need him to see me hey, so it's real. I love that for us anyway so of course she like goes in the audition kills it plays Katy Perry's roar or sing sorry Katy Perry's roar really good and then the woman that is freaking uh, the theater professor I was professor like, what yeah the hell? yeah That's nuts. um because she's been in like every i feel like cable show oh yeah it's like we've seen this lady before yeah 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 in desperate housewives um, oh <laughs> right or am I i've never watched Des- desperate housewives oh my gosh no there's so many people we have to talk about um when it comes to this uh when it comes to casting but anyway Mm -hmm. so uh yeah it's just it felt really exciting and i love this i'm i'm ready to see because how kimberly's arc oh not kimberly oh my god casey's arc ends is that she does not get the lead of course but she gets in she does get in the play right like that's the thing and it's more like a personality issue that she's having Mm -hmm. with the professor the professor's kind of like yeah you good but who cares it's like it's kind of shallow it doesn't give you no depth yeah and Casey Lynn is like all right bet I'm approved to you that mm-hmm. I did I can and I was like I was like just give it to Layden bring Layden back is that because that's what y'all yeah. wanted y'all wanted this to be Layden so bad I know you did but anyway they're gonna prove she's gonna prove to uh the professor that she, she's deep and then she's gonna make her regret not giving her the lead and I and I'm excited right I'm yeah, excited to see where that goes because mm-hmm. no, this is gonna like be her. weird we're gonna get weird I mean yeah. I'm a Casey Lynn fan right now. She's starting off okay. Mm-hmm. Two episodes, solid, solid start for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, I just feel like I'm on the fence, but not. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes. I just, it's hard when new people come into your show. Uh huh. Yeah. And then you just Anytime. have to be like okay with it. Yeah. Very confusion. Um, on that. Oh yeah, Rebecca. Um, Wis- Wisoki, uh, mm-hmm. is. Anyway, she's a devious maid. Sorry, that's the one it was. Mm. Um, not a se- uh, not desperate house. She was in devious maids, uh, and just like all these shows, mentalist, American Horror Story. Is she's like she's, she's like, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. she's okay. Like, oh, she's Shout in Ghost. That's what it. I know someone was screaming right now. Oh, because she's, she's in the commercial. Really heady. Yeah, in Ghost. Yeah, she's like, I'm too rich for this. Okay, yes, I remember. Yes, that's I've her. I've never seen Ghost, but I know her from the commercial. Because she's in the Survivor. Yeah, exactly. Of course. Oh, my gosh. Now I'm forgetting. We, yes, we did it. We got there eventually. Dorfman. Yeah, so whoever was screaming, listen, we got you. We we figured it out. Yes. We made it. Okay. That's why I was like, I know her from all these shows. Okay. Anyway, sorry, y'all. But we're back. Okay. So now, should we, should we get into Kimberly? Yeah, Kimberly. let's talk about it. All right. Kimberly's um, big like arc is that she is hooking up with Eli, the hot bye mm. guy. And we get like good, uh, I feel like, conversation here where, um, you know, Eli is very much like, listen, I don't have a problem dating gay men or, you know, men, sorry, in general, but it's straight girls that seem to freak out when um you know when whenever they learn I'm bi or whatever and Kimberly right she is our biggest ally of everything and she's like the B needs to be first in LGBT yeah so she wants it to be B L G B T Q. yeah two and, B's. and she said it twice yeah yeah that's because she really means it that's how much of an ally she is and it's just oh, it's just so funny uh unknowingly funny that's why i enjoy this character and then um he's like listen i'm so friends with my ex and then they they show pictures of each ex and, and it's giving twins 
And that's, and I, I'm with Leela on this one. She tells Leela about this, and Leela says, it's weird. It's weird that y'all yeah. think it's cute to compare your types in guys. Right. I agree. I think that, like, you like you sitting around being like, oh, don't we both think that person is cute? Like, okay, stop it. Y'all are dating each other. Date each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't I don't have no issue with y'all having the same type, whatever. Mm -hmm. But just thinking like, oh, now we can sit around and talk about it. Like, bro, just date each other. Unless y'all, and look, unless y'all plan on bringing a, per a third person into y'all's bedroom, then I'll yeah. be like sitting around like lusting over other people. It's like, kind of like, it's conducive to the relationship. Do what you want. But Million to me, percent. I'm like, yeah, do what you want. But to me, I'm like, ah, nah, 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 that's kind of weird. Just stick to what you stick to what you like and if y'all like each other then like that like what y'all like right now and let's like have a full-on conversation about like hey what is good what is it you know whatever like and what's like off limits fine i think there is definitely a conversation about mm. what we can talk about what we can't type stuff fine fair but outside of that let's not make this weird yeah but it gets weird it gets weirder yeah. and let's not only is it weird, um, because again, she gets advice from Leela, of course, and we go to the sex shop because a they haven't even had sex once. Nope, not yet. And she's already needing to spice things up. She's nervous because she's like, "Hey, I don't want to like, I don't want to go into the sex with this person, and I'm not like." giving them what they need or what they're used to because look at his type. Look, he's always always into this guy, type of guy. Washboard abs, apparently. You know, man. You're not a man. You're not a man. You're not a, you're not a man. He's not looking for that for you, dummy. But leela has got in her head. Leela said, nah, you got to give him what he's used to. Yep. Stop. Now, this it's one of the cringiest things I've seen on this show because why did you think you could peg this man? That's terrible. And here's the thing. I want to quickly also point out um, who was at the sex store. So their name um, is Alok uh, Menon, and they're like a trans, um, I believe they're trans. I'm sorry. They're queer. Sorry. I, I, I'll just say they're queer. Um, they're a queer Indian um, comedian and poet. And like oh. I followed them for a while. So oh, you recognize them? Yeah. So I was just like, wait, what? So uh, it was just crazy to actually see them um, online and to like see how cool it was to just like have them be the like sex positive because that's a little bit of what they talk about um, mm. in their uh, stand up. So uh, and and th them and Mindy Kaling have met up a few times because um, a lot of these South Asian Indian um uh, like Hollywood people are coming together now, like a lot more. And um, Lily Singh, who's a uh, superwoman from YouTube, uh, mm. she like hosts Diwali parties and they all like get together. So I think that's how all of this has happened. But it's just so cool to see them like on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I didn't know any of that. Yeah, uh, yeah but I do like that. But I do like that N Mindy is uh giving mm -hmm. you know showing some love to Indian creators and uh artists and stuff too because yeah. you know sometimes we be, we we be kind of hard on Mindy sometimes. So uh, correct. Yeah, so, listen, she's Mindy's coming back, but yeah. So a look, like it, they are so cool. Um, and uh, yeah, just like a very cool queer artist. So I'm just excited. Uh, that they mm -hmm. like get to show up in, in a certain way. So yeah, sorry. Now back to what you were saying. <laughs> she wants to peg this man. Yes. Sasha. And what's the reason? Leela told her to do so first of all, stop listening to Leela. Leela is always wrong. Leela like, in when when has she if Bella is talking about how Leela is always wrong? Right. It says she's always Bella. loud. Does not mean she's always right. I'm just like, that's fair. But uh, uh, she's always wrong. Yeah. She's all always wrong. Why would you think that this man wants you to peg him if he hadn't told you? You just can't assume somebody want to be pegged. That's like, uh, that's a conversation you need to have. I was gonna say, is that like uh, it's to me? It's towing the line. I I don't think it actually is, but like it feels like just not consensual because she says turn around and he said no. <laughs> well, at that point, yeah, she clearly did not get consent at that point. Yeah. But, but when she dropped the bag and it started vibrating, I was like, "That first of all, that bag was heavy. Also, it was vibrating. I was like, I can feel my soul leave. Like, don't, whoo. Have uh, you been in a situation where not a vibrator? I, but I, I just no. mean, like, where your bag has started vibrating because you were traveling with your toothbrush? No, that's never happened to yeah. me. But it sounds it's like. Uh, literally the worst thing to happen to you. Oof. 
Because <laughs> I, I literally drive. It was like that. Like I was just on the plane and they just like, rrr, rrr. and I was like, oh my God. So I just scream and be like, oh, my tooth, bro. My tooth. And someone's like, sure. Yeah, <laughs> it really was. Sure it is. Oh, it's terrible. Your toothbrush. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, it's bad. Would not mm -hmm. recommend. Yeah. Well, this is awkward. He basically put her out. I mean, she has to leave at this point. No, you she left. Leave. She, but he she wanted needed to, to talk. Leave. Yeah, he was yeah, like, she, okay, let's talk, let's talk. And she, she's just like, no. She I, needed I'm to leave. Done. It was time. It was time to go. Because, lady, how do you just assume somebody want to be pegged? That's, that's, you can't just jump to that. I think that's, like, really crazy. You can't just jump to that. That's crazy. Like, you can't just assume somebody want to, like, how do you? Like, we maybe have have... sex positive, but not sex stupid. She's like, so, pegging? He's like, lady. Anyway, yeah. Woo, Kimberly, come on, man. <laughs> and I feel like you really have to have, like, a rapport and, like, conversation. You just can't just be like, and let's do it. I just, whew, I could even, get out. Get out. Go, yeah, to very <laughs> get much out. That. Get out of my house. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, stop. <laughs> be normal. <laughs> that's a, that's the show, right, though. It's like, yeah. it kills us. It's cringe. And, of course, everyone's like, you need to talk to Eli. You need to, like, be cool with him again. Like, you can't just ghost him. She's like, oh, I'm going to ghost him. Look, real. Ghost. You and, can't, and there's you can't no way I wouldn't. Ghost the first. I'm with you. I, I'm i not coming back. You're, You're never coming me. back. You can never, never. You're never not seeing me. I promise no. you. No. No. Absolutely Impossible. not. Impossible. I'm blocking you on the way out. Like on the way yeah. out the door, I'm blocking all your social media accounts. Like that did not happen. There's no way we could come back from You're that. You're not seeing me. Nope. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> nope. Oh I'm that. my Stop. god. Nope. It's the way. Like there's probably so many embarrassing things I've done, but I'll never. I blocked them out of my memory. And if, and I blocked that person that yeah. it happened with. Like so now we'll never talk about it. It'll never come back up because I blocked it, so it doesn't exist. Don't ever reach for me. You know what I nope. mean. Mm -hmm. impossible totally. oh my god but yeah she anyway she does the right thing i guess and you know does the whole she reaches out to him fine and then they have sex no like in a normal like, way and then they have normal sex a lot yeah. yeah but they didn't they they, they, they they don't stop having it like this is the best sex she, she's having like she's getting, and i thought about is, you because you said kim really is a sex addict she she be getting it in. Kimberly yeah. don't she don't mess around because she like this is the best. I'm having the best sex ever. Like was it last season? Like was when the when the 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 Ford Exchange I'm guy from recipe. Oklahoma yeah, yeah show, showed up <laughs> showed up and he like put her through the mattress. Then like Kimberly be getting it in. She don't care. And the thing is, she said she's having aftershocks. Yeah, Kimberly, you've been through. She's been through a lot in this last couple of years she of college life. Kind of a break. She showed up like, oh yeah, I was with my boyfriend, and me and him were the only. That is, listen, she was Casey Lynn. She was Casey Lynn, right? Now, now look at her. She out here wilding. She woo, they okay, were to Medusa. Yeah, but uh, I wonder if her sex addict, you know, status is going to come up when she's trying to be a Supreme Court justice because that seems to be what her main storyline is. And I'm not understanding how she's not worried about that. They yeah. don't like I. The biggest issue she's gonna have is because you're a woman, Kimberly. Is that you've been around? Well, that and Kimberly, did you almost get kicked out of school last year for like, like uh, cheating? Like, cheating, yeah. Ma'am, <laughs> if if that don't put a stain on your career, then nothing will. You hey, know, like I think you're that's okay. Yeah, I think you're I fine. about that actually. Yeah. Like you're fine, lady. Stop making stop making this a big deal because now you can't trust her. Because his thing, if anything shady happens, Kimberly gonna snitch because she snitches on Lila in this episode so fast. Oh, I oh my god, Lilo and Snitch and TBH. I will say this till I die. I just Forever. want everyone to be okay with it. Um, but yeah, it's just we're 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 getting automated at sips. Yeah. We're getting food robots. And Leela, rightfully, Leela is so good. Leela and Kanan, right? They're like, oh my gosh, robot lady, we're so excited. Thank you for bringing these here, blah, blah, blah. And then as soon as robot lady leaves, she kicks them. And yeah. this R2-D2 D2 ass bitch. Yeah. I love Leela. <laughs> and I she's right. That she's not it, wrong. The, 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 the tip's gone. Mm-hmm. Um... 
But Kimberly doesn't see it. She's like, well, you know, like there's different ways and we can write a letter and all this other stuff. Like, girl, these people are about to put you, like like they said, these robots are coming for everything. Yep. And I, it's valid. It's valid. By automating this, you don't have to pay like delivery people. Obviously, you wouldn't have to pay. Like if you if people are doing this and it's completely like mm -hmm. automated, then you don't, you need less staff. And the staff okay. takes less money to, to run than probably these robots. You know what I'm saying? So you just like, I mean, the staff takes more money to run than the robots. So you basically just, you make your life easier as a corporation or as a business, but it's at the expense of the people who work there. And so, of course, uh, Leela and um, Kanan, they see it because they've always been on working here to Hooray. pay the bills, right? Well, uh, Kimberly just started because she lost her scholarship because she's cheated. And so um, <laughs> she's not really into, she doesn't really know that this thing can happen to her, right? So it's happening. But Sasha, they have this service near you, right? Like I've seen these yeah. in like a... Uh, I've never seen this in Texas. I don't, so it probably happens, this, but I've never seen it. That restaurant, here. like this Indian restaurant I go to, um, has the like little robot that comes out and it'll say, like, please take your food. And then it's just like the funniest thing. I'm not taking but, a robot. No. But the thing is, what they do is like the, a server takes your thing, like your order, and then the robot only brings out certain dishes. It's very weird. Mm hmm. It's fine. Like, I understand, like, wanting a drink in the middle of the night and you mm -hmm. wanted, like, somebody, like, a machine, like, kind of like DoorDash. Like, I understand Correct. that. But at the same time, it's like, you know. No, it, it's weird. Uh, but, again, I remember when Uber, because uh, San Francisco, it, again, one of the first, we were the first place to get Uber, I think. And it, we went. And now we have Waymo. Have you heard of Waymo? No, what's way The driverless cars. Oh, absolutely not. Not doing it. Sorry. Terrified. Everyone has done it, and I'm so scared. I could not. You've never done it? I would never do it. No, I would, I'm I would so be scared. the last person on I'm earth so to get in one of those driverless cars. Yeah, I, I will no, be the I last person. We will be the last person. Yes, yeah, no. me and you. We, the rest no. of the world moved on, and we refuse to evolve because I'm yeah. not getting a driverless so car. If you're in San Francisco, if you land an SFO in your Waypo, you getting in a driverless car on the highway. That's scary. I don't, I'm not doing it. Nope. Yeah, Sorry. I would literally nope. scream. I'm not joking. But I know people that have jumped in front of a Waymo. Like just because they wanted see to see. It what stop? Would yeah. And it did, did it stop? stop, but like, why are we doing this? No, no, no. I'm good. There's Thank no you. one. You know, there's like no one in the front two seats. It's just you yeah. in I'm the good. back. I'm good. There's, uh, no, the, the nope. tech. You've gone too far. So gone I'm fully with Leela is my point. Okay. Yeah. And of course they get, you know, uh robot lady does come back to check. Kimberly cannot lie. And she's like, it'll go on my permanent record. Kimberly, please, you cheated. What you cheated, on? babes. Like <laughs> stop it. And stop over it. and you snitched on them too, actually, if you think about it. But here yes. we are. So she cheated. She's doing all of this. And she tells the robot lady we haven't used it. So now we're using it until mm -hmm. Kimberly and Eli meet up at a rave. And she drinks Molly water. Is hey. that really a thing? It is a thing. Okay, you know, I just, you know, I went to a rave for Halloween. I was with oh. some certain Survivor players in New Orleans. Uh, oh. After yes. Halloween. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We had a good time. I didn't have any Molly water. Uh. Fortunately, uh, because okay. I don't know if I would uh, have reacted well to the Molly water because uh, Kimberly, she does not handle it well either. She thinks that the uh, the, le the the women politicians, the, the goats of the w of women politics are texting her, basically telling her she's never going to get into the club, uh, right. you know, into the Supreme Court. She's never going to be a part of this elusive, <laughs> illustrious group. Uh, because she's drinking so Molly water at the party. Sotomayor, like, why is Judge Sotomayor messaging you, baby girl? But right, I guess like, you're empty. Okay. Yeah, she was she was a little freaked out. Sometimes the drug paranoia will get to you and have you thinking Fair. things that don't really, yeah, yes. you know, so yes, tough for her. But but Leela came and rescued her. Be where is Eli? Yes, she lost him in the crowd, and he don't care. I mean, he might care, but like, is, she, is he not texting her? Maybe she's too high. Like, I don't understand. Like, maybe yeah. maybe he's no. texting her and she thinks it's AOC. Oh, you know what? That okay, I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you. You can't yeah. be part of the squad, right? You Fair. got lost in the rave. Raves okay. are hard. To, raves are hard to navigate. It's a yeah, lot of. Yeah, yeah. It's very dark. The music doesn't stop. There's no real, like she said. There's no real break in the music. It's like one. Yeah, four it was song. one continuous song. And I've that's the truest statement I've ever heard in my life because it that's exactly how it feels. It's supposed to be like what it's are we four, doing? sweating. 
Oh. That's it. Just wedding. Shout out to you. I mean, I again, I have friends that go to raves, and I just wow. Yeah, you gotta learn how you gotta learn how to drag yourself out of the rave because they they will keep that heat going and it will switch up a little bit, but not enough for you to get out. You gotta be able to. It's like double dutch. You gotta be able to know how to get in and get out. That's why drugs got it. <laughs> That's why drugs exactly. Yeah, because they just can't be. If you enjoy rave sober, please can you let me know? Yeah, no, no, no I can't. Not my not my ministry. <laughs> yeah, just like put it in the chat. Just like put yeah. uh, like thumbs up. Even you don't need to like out yourself like that yeah but just i need to know because mm -hmm. that that's, that's a bit crazy no right it's a look it's a lot of crazy it's a okay. lot of crazy just just want to make sure i'm not i'm not going crazy but either way poor leela she's like it smells like acid titties in here. real, real. <laughs> yep. and then leela immediately is like okay we're, we're going home but we have to make one stop and this and is crazy yes stop this from hell this is crazy this is crazy. Leela is like about to destroy campus property in front of Snitchy McRat, Lilo and Snitch. Like, Kimberly. why? Does she want Kimberly in on it? Like, so like they have like a joint secret. So it's like you can't oh. tell because you'll go down with me. Because cause cause in my mind, Kimberly's gonna throw you under the bus immediately. Yes, correct. You don't do there's Listen, there's certain crimes that if you were to do them, there are certain people and types of people that you can't do those things around. Kimberly is not the type of person who you could do a uh, little crime, petty crime with, right? Yes. Like victimless crimes. Kimberly is going to snitch every time. And so I just feel like Leela, Leela trying to get herself thrown in jail or something like that this season. Because mm -hmm. Why are you doing this in front of Kimberly? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I think that she should have lied to Kimberly. I mean, like, yes, you're on drugs. This is not actually happening. Plausible ooh. deniability. Like, ooh, you're having a dream. Yeah. I think that's the way we get through it. Or she should have taken Kimberly home and then continue what she was doing. You know, Fair. like, well, why did you take Kimberly on the... You just don't bring everybody to everything. Kimberly don't need to go to the rave, and she definitely don't need to go where you go out and murder all of the, the robot delivery people that you just hired. Like, what are we doing? It's mm. not needed. No. Okay. Sloppy, sloppy work from sloppy work from Leela. Not impressed. Sorry, but honestly, Leela. it's on brand for Leela. So yeah, I, you're right. So here yeah. we are. Everyone's in. Robots on fire. And another question. Leela, everyone knows where the robots are coming from, coming to. Mm -hmm. Like, did you make did you get a new credit card? Did you get a new um yeah, yeah. credit card a new uh, like, like a, account a new student right. ID number i'm assuming what's happening yeah like she got like a burner phone with the app on it and then dropped the pin in that spot and like because it's like they, they could trace this back to you I, Leela, but Leela is the type to have a burner phone so you okay. know it's gonna be you hard to know yeah her. yeah yeah so this is she's saving know. money for her um pony well she's never gonna get her it because horse. kimberly's gonna oh. throw her under the bus so good luck okay. with that yep so that's what that's what the hell we're on mm -hmm. yeah. in this show. So here we are, and we're gonna somehow make it through everyone. I don't know how, but they're they're up in a blaze, and that ends Kimberly and everyone else's story there. Mm -hmm. And where do you want to go next, Bella or, uh, or Whitney? Let's talk about Whitney because I want to say yes. Bella for last because I got okay. I kind of got some I got some good stuff to say about my girl yeah. this time. Okay, okay, let's go to Whitney. <laughs> So Whitney is still an A fam and she gets an A plus. But not only that, it's the professor says, please come see me. No, well, how would the professor do that? That's crazy. you know, this happened to me in college. <gasps> yeah. Oh, so, so I, I, no, so I was uh no, because this I actually about to do a very dumb thing I'm about to tell you about. So oh. uh so I got an ask to I had the same thing. I was in I was in Spanish. I was in like second or third Ooh. year Spanish. And my Spanish teacher was like, hey, come see me after class. And I went and my Spanish teacher said, Hey, have you considered double majoring in Spanish? And I said, No, are you crazy? Like it is like, what are you talking about? I was like, you're insane. Why would I double major in Spanish? Like, what is that going to do for me? Like mentally, I was like, my grades are barely good. Like I'm good oh, in Spanish I because I understand like the format of the class. Like I get how it works. So yeah. I know how to make good grades in this class, right? I know what it takes. 
but I can't actually speak Spanish. And he's like, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 but you will get better if you if you pick up these extra classes, you could get better and better. And I could really see you double majoring in Spanish. And I was like, look, it's hard enough keeping up with the workload that I have right now. Woe is me. I'm in college. And he was like, okay, all right. Literally. Yeah. This literally happened to me. Yeah. And he was like, okay, well, if you, if you, there's a spot for you. He even offered me a Spanish minor and I turned it down because I was like, I don't want to do more work. I'm not, look, I'm not here in college to do work. I'm here in college to have a good time. And so I legit turned down a Spanish minor. And it is the one of the two regrets I have in college is that I turned down a Spanish minor because at least I could have did the minor. But no. I think minors are possible on account that you have to take a certain number of classes anyway. Because I had two minors. Yeah, well, um, I did. I did. My sociology professor was like, "You need to take this minor." Well, that's the thing. I ended up doing a double minor. But yeah, it, I did too. It, I did double minor. It should have been Spanish. I picked English oh, and social work, sir. And social work. I mean, it's like if you thought you were ever gonna make money, you just threw it all away when you picked these two minors. And I look yeah. back, I'm like. Damn, this person really went out on the limb to you to tell you that you could be good at something, and you were like, "Nah, I want to take the easy way out." And <laughs> so, uh, so funny to me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I did. Yeah, I did an international area studies minor and a sociology. Yeah, see, so, so not that's like social, I was that's, making money, but yeah. We, we, listen, it, listen. I I was just like watching, like uh, I was watching Whitney make the mistakes that I made, basically. Yes. You know, I was like, yes, but but I wasn't rude about it. Wendy basically told this lady that you can't get, you can't make no money in these liberal arts degrees. Okay. And she said, what's going on? I don't, I don't really understand. Um, it leads to no jobs and uh, I'm going to do a STEM major. First of all, what the hell is a STEM major? Like, but anyway, I guess they don't want to give her one. Um, well, she hasn't decided what she wants to do yet. Fair, you know, we saw fair. that she likes science, but we don't know what Whitney's goal is. She's like, you know, just know it's going to be in Whitney science. a storyline. Yeah, yes. for sure. Okay, <laughs> did I lie? Uh, anyway, also, do you know uh, you never watched the Mindy Project? No. But Professor Phillips is Tamara from Mindy Project. Ooh. And when I tell you, I screamed and I say, "How do we get her on more?" Um, because this is Zosha. I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, with uh, Rockmore, Rockmore, and oh my God, I screamed Tamara is like one of the funniest characters on Mindy Project she's like um imagine Layton okay like that's kind of Tamara uh but not obviously not rich but in the like uh the very much like I'm just good at what I do I'm chill I you know I'm smart uh, and I'm a little bit rude <laughs> yeah I recognized her because I'm pretty sure she was um in the show Atlanta in like an episode. Oh um, yeah. And so um so I was like, I recognize her. Uh but she she uh was very offended by Whitney basically being like, this ain't a real career path. I can't African American studies is not gonna work. Um so you know she needs to be Whitney again is gonna find a way to get humbled on this show every mm -hmm. time. And the thing is if it was Tamara's character, Whitney would have not been standing. Mm, so we okay. should be lucky. Yeah. That it's just Professor Phillips <laughs> here. Uh, and Whitney like has a little moment, but then she thinks the professor hates her because the professor was trying to talk to her about Project Mercury, right? Katherine Johnson. And obviously Whitney's not paid attention because she's, again, Kimberly is taking her away uh, and they're chatting about whatever. And she thinks that they're talking about Magic Johnson. Mm, so I must yeah. ask you, because your boy was called in here. Um, ta uh, not Tamara. Oh, my God. Professor Phillips says, listen, I'm not talking about the greatest point guard of all time. She said it. She said Luca. And then someone said, about Luca? And she said, get out of my class. And I'm like, girl, don't fight me. Like, no, like we, we try to have a good time, Professor. You out here disrespecting the goat. Give Luca his things. Luca's I didn't like, even Luca's know Magic Johnson was a point guard. Oh yeah, I I just think like he's too big, you know, in my mind mm -hmm, to be a point mm -hmm. guard. Like I would think it was just like a straight up guard or something. Yeah, no, nah, Magic could do it all. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I, that's why. Yeah, but I love the Luca shout out in this episode. I, I'm glad you caught that too because I I I love Luca Doncic. Um, so he's so good. Oh, we know. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's he's just so good. Look at me, like I'm like this is my guy. I love him so much. Uh, and so uh, shout out to Luca wherever you are. I hope you're watching Sex Lives of College Girls. Oh, period. Okay, Luca, because you were mentioned, and we love you. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, listen, shout out Thunder, because we're killing it right now. All, All right. these young players. All right. All right. <laughs> so anyway, um, we'll like put that onto the side because there's another thing, Rena who is Whitney's soccer rival mm -hmm. uh, is also going to get into Whitney's position because Whitney yeah. maybe didn't do so hot because she's taking too many damn classes. Uh, and it's because Whitney's so versatile, apparently. Yeah. Well, but the, we saw this coming. Rena is, uh, yep. is coming for Whitney's uh, crown in the soccer, in the soccer thing. And Whitney's trying to do a lot. Being a STEM major obviously means she has a lot of homework probably. Yeah. And then that's another reason why she was not willing to pick up a double major. Cause when is she going to find the time but she thinks they're like, all right, I maybe I need to take less classes. And she decides that she's just going to go ahead and drop African-American studies anyway, because why would she possibly need to know about what black people have gone through as a black woman? Like, okay, Whitney. And, and this is where you can tell, right? Like, uh, it doesn't, this is definitely, we're living in like, what is a class? Uh-huh. Um, you know, it, it, war, I don't want to say war, but where is definitely class issues. Um, yeah, for sure. That sometimes can trump, um, no pun intended. No, I'm just kidding. But class ah. issues can sometimes trump uh, like race issues. Oh, easily. Because Whitney mm -hmm. doesn't know that these are struggles that she has because she comes from a, yes. a affluent family. Her exactly. mom is successful. So she doesn't know that like, hey, your mom had some, probably had some obstacles that you can't even see that she had to get around in order to get in the position that she's in because you just woke up and kind of were in a successful family. Mm -hmm. And so um, she will find out that, you know, there are other issues, intrinsic issues that happen when you are a person in a minority trying to work in a male-dominated, white male-dominated field. And we mm -hmm. talked about this and Never Have I Ever with Kamala. Um, but um, now, you know, Whitney's going to see it in her own life. Yep. Same thing. And of course, she that she it's it's a quote unquote minor issue where it's a one size fits all hat like cap um mm -hmm. in in the lab. And of course it doesn't fit over her braids. And she right. has to sit out and miss out on class because of this. I don't understand how the professor was just the professor don't give a damn. What was he supposed to do? Like, all right. Fair. You know, like what you want me to say, we don't yeah. got it. You know, yeah, but that's the thing. He, you yeah. need people to advocate for this kind of equality, even when it comes, like you said, it's a class issue. It comes to mm -hmm. like size issues as well. You know, like it's one size fit all, but it doesn't fit her hair because, yeah. you know, she has big braids. But there's plenty of uh, like social change that's had to happen because people aren't making clothes or like safety material that fits people who are bigger or, you know, fits people with different body types and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's like these are these are fights that have to happen. But you need people to learn about them so you know that they're coming. So, like, Whitney shows up and she is, like, she's stunned that this is even a conversation. It's like, well, yes. sorry, you got to sit out of class. And I think research. that was interesting, right? Where we actually had to see, like, Whitney going through that and need mm -hmm. to, needing to figure out, oh, like, there, this is what Professor was talking about. And this is how, you know, dealing with, like, women, Black women, in STEM is important to understand all the issues that they had to go through so that mm -hmm. I can be here. Yeah. Yeah. And so she ends up going back to her professor and apologizing. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, the professor kind of like, okay, well, I'll let you back in, you know, I'll let you back in the class, but like, we're going to try to push for that minor too. Um, and uh, Kimberly will overcorrect. I'm, I'm sorry. Whitney will overcorrect by then saying, <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do both the things and I'm going to spend all my time working and I'm going to spend all my time working on soccer. I'm never going to sleep ever. And I think this is probably like a typical college kids like thought process, yeah. right? Like at some point you're just like, no, there are 24 hours in the day. I got other hours I can use. Why do I need to sleep? You know, the worst thing that happened there was someone was like, you have the same hours in the day as Beyonce. That's just not, That's not the truth. I hate anybody who says we have the same 24 hours is lying to you. Because my day and your day will never look the same and no matter who you are. And uh, you mm -hmm. might have 24 hours where you have assistance and help and money and resources. And the next person might have 24 hours, but they ain't got none of that. And, Can you uh, imagine living a life where your food is made for you? Just that part. Just the food. Lord, if I didn't, just, if I never had to cook. Imagine. Imagine. You and know, grocery like, shop, right? Like that's that true. hours out of your mm -hmm. week taken yeah. out. Even even if you think of like like I'm in Texas like I I, I make yeah. sure that like transportation is a big issue for me oh, like I make sure yeah. I have a car yes. right because I but like my 24 hours does not look the same if I have to walk everywhere mm -hmm. because now 
my it, it, it takes away from the process of me like even just getting to what I need to get to to do stuff that I need to get done. And so it's like twenty four hours is not thing, right? Like all of yeah. this stuff is just like it takes versus if we had a driver, right? It's just, all of this stuff matters. No, there's I'm a level, with you. There's a level of privilege that goes into those statements mm -hmm. that like people just overlook, and it's just not true. We do not have the same twenty four hours. I'm sorry. And, and don't live your life like looking at what someone who's like faking it online it equals. Uh -huh. like, it's never gonna be the same right because so yeah yeah no we agree there we do not have the same 24 hours and don't let nobody discourage you by telling you that yeah and don't piss me off like shut up <laughs> don't piss uh, me off. It's, it's a lie anyway so yeah so that uh is just she's taking caffeine no she's sorry popping espresso beans as almost caffeine pills and mm. then on top of that she's of course just like kimberly having lots of sex with isaiah so mm -hmm. Whitney and Isaiah are now hot and heavy, but they have rules. No childhood stories longer than one minute, no follow-up questions, and no sleepovers. And by they have rules, you mean Whitney has rules. Because yes. we never see Isaiah push any of this. Whitney has just decided they're like, no, nah, I need to do everything I need to do and, and have sex. Because God forbid this woman goes to therapy. Women he, will do everything no. oh. but go to therapy, Sasha. First of all, talk to yourself in the mirror. I, we're talking about the show, Sasha. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this, this nice man suggests loneliness epidemic. My and, and yet here this man is telling this woman, maybe you need to talk to a professional. And she's like, no, yeah. hashtag not all men. <laughs> <laughs> Go to therapy. Stop having sex to try to try to quell your anxiety. It's not the same. Oh my god. Yeah, because she does end up sleeping over because she's just so exhausted and some things have to give. Mm -hmm. And she ends up, of course, staying over. She, then she, you know, Isaiah look kind of diagnoses her a little bit as you know, like saying, I think you might have anxiety, uh, or some version of that. You should go to the talk to somebody. Yeah, just talk on campus and see what's going on. And yeah. she walks in, but then walks right back out. And I won't shame her for that. At least, like, it's hard. It's hard, right, to go and, like, talk to people professionally and open your life up to people. But look at how much better she played at soccer that game after just talking to Isaiah yeah. and having a good night's sleep. You know, like, just having mm -hmm. somebody to vent to and have some sleep made her do way better in life in just that short amount of time. So talking to a professional can help. But it's hard. I understand that. I can acknowledge that. So I won't knock yeah. her too much. At least she went. So baby yeah. steps. And she checked in. So let's see yeah. what happens. But she checked right back out. Yeah. So. But baby steps. Baby Ooh. steps. Yeah. So that and that's Whitney's story. We're still not getting a lot. Um, I feel like for her, they're just adding stress to her. But listen, if anyone watched Degrassi, you know that you shouldn't be doing all this. You should calm right. down. Degrassi oh, yeah. taught us this already. These people don't, they were losing recipes. They didn't do their research. They're not, no. the kids, the kids are not okay. They need to, they need to get into the old, uh, the old texts, you know, start reading the documents. That's what we laid out these shows for them before. So they don't have to live these lives. Okay. Please wake up everybody. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. So that's Whitney. Again, still, we need more. We need more mm -hmm. uh, we from need her. And <laughs> talking about more, talking about almost a well-rounded story. <laughs> Yes. Let's talk about our girl Bella. Bella. Oh, brother. Hey, man. We talked last episode about Arvin. And I was like, look at Mindy giving us a little a little love interest here. And then I felt so betrayed when we found out that this man has a girlfriend. I was like, and well, a white damn. girlfriend, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, of course. You know, like typical Mindy. <laughs> Oh my, I just like also I want to be clear. I don't want to sound like anti like interracial relationships or even anti white like people. It's just Mindy it makes it so frustrating. It's her thing. Yeah, it's her thing. Yeah, oh. like that that's all we mean by it. Yeah. So anyway, Arvin, of course, is someone that maybe Bella's into. Taylor notices it. And Taylor is like, y'all gotta get together. Come on, come on, please. Let's make this happen. So I think a little bit of peer pressure. Uh, Bella Bella asks Arvin out to lunch, and they're very awkward. Mm -hmm. Um, because Arvin is nerd, right? Like capital N E R D, and he looks up puns on hospitalpuns.com, but he's also a very nice guy. And that's not Bella's type. Bella's type is Jason Momoa and funny guys that look like Rachel Maddow. See, and I thought you could relate to some of this because I know you don't like nice guys. However, that's a lie. Oh, yeah. 
that I have never dated not nice guys, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, no, like legitimately. Okay. I yeah, I just <laughs> I know that like I can take over. Uh huh. Nice guys, so like I have to yet yeah, do a good job of like I mean, like you gotta be a good person. Yeah. But there's only room for one jerk in the relationship, and that's me. You like it's good. You gotta put your foot down. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I've never dated like push. Well, I sorry, I have dated pushovers, and it does not work. But mm. I'm not into the like neggers or like the uh, ones that are like mean. Um, to me, like no, could yeah. never. Yeah, she's like, uh, she says she likes Jafar because he's like, he's he will take what he wants. Yeah, that's crazy. She sounds, yeah, she sounds like insane. Years old. She sounds insane. She's like, she sounds insane. She's like, she's like Aladdin. Yeah. What? Right. Why would I be in the Hercules when I could be in the Hades? Like, ma'am, are you okay? Like he's the devil. He's literally the god of the underworld. Yeah, and like, she's like, we don't see him fully shirtless. But the thing is, Haiti kind of hot. Haiti's no, cut it out. Cut it out. Um, like I see it a little bit. I, and I was this was disappointing to me because I was kind of like Bella. Come on, I kind of like the Arvin thing. And this is before we knew that she that he had a girlfriend. So yes. I was really kind of rooting for him. But this man is such a nice guy that when this woman is choking in front of her, in front of Bella, not only does he ask for consent to touch the lady. But he saves her life with the Heimlich maneuver and those thrusts. That first of all, what are you, Andy, in a freaking Survivor challenge? Yeah, baby, Andy, no more. Because, <laughs> oh, because no, that's crazy. Like, why was he like humping? Either way, he saved her life. And he I think that life. girl was the girl from like th that freshman that um, Bella right like really crushed her feelings. I think that's her. Yeah. Um. And, which is why she got kicked off the Foxy for real at the end. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember if that's exactly the person. Or maybe they're on the Catellan together. But either way, nuts. Yeah. The Arvin nuts. saved her. He saved Arvin, her life. And she said, I'm horny for nice now. Yeah. And yes, that's... girls, that's where you should be. There you go. There's nothing wrong with a nice guy. Like, geez, like you got to open yourself up to be having nice things. And I think that yes. Bella, she's like, find some like type of like sexual pleasure in like a guy who is like uh, more like, I won't say aggressive, but you know, like, like she, like she said, like a Jafar type where it's like, he sees what he wants. He goes and gets it. Uh, Like that's attractive to her. But also you want somebody who is going to be kind to you. You know, like that's the thing. Like, he needs to be kind to you. And if he's not kind to everybody else, chances are, like, uh, everybody wants to do this, like, oh, like, well, at least to me, he's not like that. Like, stop playing. That person is like that to everybody. Um, and he hasn't been like that to you yet, you know? So find somebody that you know is kind. He doesn't have to be a pushover, but at least find somebody who cares about other people because then he will care about you too, probably. Yeah, it's just, it's so weird. Mm hmm Yeah. She doesn't, she didn't like, I thought it was weird that she also was confused that her friends didn't like nice guys either. Like, um, she was like, "Why? Why am I the only one who's like this?" I'm like, "What? Do you, have you met your friends? Like, they like Kimberly was like all over like the uh, uh Kanan and stuff, and he's a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, as a matter of fact, Kanan, Kimberly, Kanan and Whitney both not were and nice. Are you kidding me? Kanan Come on. has almost no more presence in this show I now know, that he's not dating with these girls. They got they like." kind of wrote him out of the show <laughs> and it's like on the slick <laughs> he's, he's like we're under like worse than Lila which is crazy yeah oh my god mm -hmm. too nice of a guy that's the problem first of all how dare you I'm just, look at the show look at the material no no, no <laughs> it's just I love a nice guy that's like also the um the like main attraction in the room that's my mm. problem. So it's like a very specific kind of nice guy. Yeah. To where he can still stand up to me. But I'm still princess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it's hard. It's hard out here in these streets, okay? Um, when you're allegedly intimidating. And mm -hmm. Anyway. So, of course, they're like having a whole moment. Bella's turned on. She's ready. Okay. So we tailor again. Uh, is out here being our new laden. So she's like, great, I, you know, hot blonde here, hot blonde there, da da da. I just, uh, I just wanna um, f every girl in the world, uh, type mm -hmm. energy. And, and again, when that song came out, I think everyone was singing that. Oh so yeah, Taylor's just. But it's, off, it's still an awful song. It's still an awful song. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. The lyrics age horribly. 
horribly. And they aged horribly like a week later. Like people were reading the lyrics to that song being like, hey, that's inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> it's inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, Mac Main, you, you need to be under the jail. Just to say that. You know what? Whatever. So uh, that's what Taylor's on. And uh, it's fine. Because Bella shares, you know, saying, like, here's this basic girl. Uh, his girlfriend's name is Emily, I think. So here's, yeah. you know, yeah, it, Emily. So here's her picture. And Taylor's like, you're prettier than her. And again, girlies standing up for girlies. So Bella goes, well, I just show you the worst picture of her on purpose. Oh, I love it. I love it. They're, they're all into it. And then we get crazy advice. Which, have you done this? Because Taylor says, just text him. Can't wait to be in your bed tonight. And then say, oops, wrong person. Uh, I've never done that. But I have received texts that are similar to that. Like, not so much like in your bed. It's a like, girl thing. Yeah. It is, it's a girl move. It really is. Like, oops, didn't mean that for you. Wrong person. All right. Bet. Unfortunately, I have done that. Multiple yeah. times. I, I will yeah. say not as successful as you'd want it to be. <laughs> it's like a necessary evil though like you gotta yeah. shoot it you gotta shoot that shot because it's such a like low effort thing but like i feel like the 70 80 percent has not worked it, it looked like bella wasn't going to do it she said like if this was last yep. year she would have did it and sent some nudes as well and i'm like bella come on man you got to learn how to just like she just she just does Me too much man. every time yeah. yeah come on man it's like, like bring it back a little bit um but she does end up sending the text message despite the fact that she knows this man has a girlfriend. And this is Dirty Mac. And this is, she is, Bella, I can't support it. I can't support the Dirty Mac, man. You know you know what you're doing. You're trying to break this man up with his girlfriend. It's like, uh, you know, what happened to girls protecting girls? <laughs> it's just very funny. I'm sorry. And she, of course, doesn't send it, but then decides, you know what? I'm going to just do it. I'm going to mm -hmm. do it. And Arvin doesn't see it, which no. is truly, I would peel over, keel over and die. But she unsent it before he could see it too. Like she's Allegedly. like, he hadn't seen the message yet. But Allegedly. my thing is, just because it don't say seen don't mean I haven't seen it. Cause you know how your notification pops up on your screen? Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you could see the message without clicking it and getting the, you know, the red notification. Mm -hmm. Like if it pops up on the top of my screen while I'm talking to somebody else or while I'm texting, I still read it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you unsend it and I go back and look, I'm like, I know I wasn't tripping. There was a message here, but I, okay, it went away, but I still saw it. Do you think there's any world where he actually did see it? Because by the end of this episode, Sasha, he does break up with his girlfriend. Yes. Listen, because they're out here on, uh, you know, they, they, they have to guard the rock uh, and the do all this rock. For spirit rock for rivalry week. All the, lots of weeds. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, and all this stuff is happening. And then he just, he says, I broke up with Emily. You know, he's such a good guy. Right. But why did he break up? Is it because he likes uh, Bella? Or is it because of that sexy text message she sent him? Because she sent the message. You know those dos. <laughs> uh, yeah, it could be both. I guess we won't find out until episode five. But um, in the meantime, Sasha. Oh, they're such a good story. They're guarding the spirit rock. And Bella is approached by uh, a foxy gentleman himself. Frederick, Frederick the mascot. He yeah. is Frederick the fox. Um, and he is in full mascot uniform, but he is yeah. spitting game at Bella and she is catching all the riz, even through the uniform. Sasha, could somebody holler at you from inside a uniform when you were in college? Like, could the mascot get your attention? Like a boomer and sooner. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I think Franklin the Fox is hot. Hotter than Boomer and Sooner. Really? Boomer and Sooner is straight white horses. I mean, but this is that was just like a, a brown fox. Yeah, but I just feel like he just has a lot more going on. I'm looking at Boomer and Sooner right now. And they just they look just like him, except they're horses and he's a fox. No. Boomer and Sooner are not like Boomer and Sooner are like my children. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but that's okay. That's different. That's different. Yeah. Like, I just okay. can't. Okay. You know what? No. Maybe. Okay. Let me look at that. I take it all back. Um, <laughs> depends. It depends. It depends on the voice. But you would never have to. You could. You could seal the deal without seeing the face. No. At that all. Bella. Bella is crazy. She's insane. That. She is insane. 
No, Bella's actually crazy. Yeah, you know what? On the list, okay, some pictures of Boomer and Sooner. Yeah. With this picture with Baker Mayfield. Okay. Ah! <laughs> yes. Like Boomer and Sooner can get it. Up. Yeah. But without seeing the face at all, you just go no. and just like. But if you saw, saw the maps, yeah. You just imagine the faces. She hot. had already decided she was going to do it before she see the abs. There, because yeah. his voice. Listen, a deep voice will do wonders. She was. He was spitting game. He was like, "You the finest girl I seen here." And that was crazy. And Bella said, "Yeah, I am." Yeah, she said, I like I this. Bella. Bella, I'm pretty sure she had sex with that man inside of a classroom or like a library. A, a library, hundred percent. Yep. Why do y'all keep doing this? First of all, having sex in a lot in a school library is wild. Having sex. In a school library with a person in a in a fox uniform is wild. If you get caught, they need to arrest you. You need to go to jail because you need to be you need she she needs to be put that like into a facility. No, like, but did you see his abs? But did she see his face? No. He must be asked because it ain't it anyway. <laughs> she <laughs> thought he might be a butterface. She was and like, what, what, "Did you see the abs?" He took I'm off sorry. his mask. He took off his mask eventually. Were you impressed? Oh my god! I screamed. I said, "Bella, you better take a picture and add to be like this is, you know, this is on my list. Add it to your hit list." Yeah. <laughs> to me again, Franklin the Fox is hot. Number one. Secondly, the abs w- worth it. I keep the mask on. It's fine. Third, I just want to say is like you must know the face so that you can tell your friends that the. That that was me. I but that's that. the thing. If the mask comes off and it's not like to your liking, then you have to take it to the grave because you had sex with the mascot, and you did. And now that he's like his his mask is off and everybody knows who it is, you're like like you're ashamed of it, you know, because you're you're not a you're not a fan of what the what the pre- presentation is. Or what if he's a weirdo? You know, this this man is in costume. He must be. Well, he, that's the thing. He is. We're we're th- four episodes in. There's a non-zero chance that this man pops up at the at, later on in this season and he's done something heinous. And she's like, oh, I would have, I didn't know that was I him. I think he's used that same exact line. Oh, if it works in the yeah. mascot uniform. And look, look, if these women are willing to have sex with you in a mascot uniform, then whatever. I guess you got the real. Well, you have to have abs like that. Let's be clear. Yeah, Bella. Yeah, Bella Bella, did, Bella was ready girl. before she knew about the yeah. abs, Sasha. You know, you know, she, know Bella is a special flower. She, yeah, she, she really is. This was incredible. Now, my, mind you, I'm not shaming people who have sex with mascots. The furry community no. is out there. Yeah, We don't kick shame. But Bella, I just want you to get to know the person inside the mask better because you don't know who this is. Bella Love just needed to get it out of her system one time. Well, when is it not out of her system? Okay. Bella just be out here wilding. She really just be doing what she want. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Bella just needed to get it out of her system. She did. And mm-hmm. then we're back. Yeah. I mean, it's better than what she said, crush, crushing up on, uh, crushing on a, a wifed up nice guy. It's mm-hmm. like... I mean, the alternative is Arvon, Arvond, Arvind, Arvind. Yeah. The alternative is Arvind. And he doesn't want her. He has a girlfriend. And so she's kind of mm-hmm. like, all right, well, this is what I'll do. But she even, t- she breaks up with the fox because she's like, no, nah, I still got feelings for this other guy who is taking Which is girl mad. That's growth. She's down bad. She's whipped. The girl is whipped. She'd rather be alone and pining for this man than at least having sex with the mascot. No, I just think you could do both. You could, but she can't. Her mind, she's, she's in love. Wrong with you, Bella? She's whipped. Arvin got the juice. Stand up. No. Nice Bella, guys. Let your feelings lead you the way you, like, let, listen, Bella, you, you're you doing the right thing. Leave yourself, leave yourself free for this man it's for whenever well, he's ready for you. Wait for this man. He'll leave his girl oh, for you. I just looked up the actor who I think plays Franklin, played Frank. Franklin. Franklin the mascot? Yeah. Is Jason Momoa type? Oh, uh, well, that's her type. Andreas know. Alfaro, and he's a stunt man. Oh, yeah, that's her type. So you know, yeah. She's, she's well, unfortunately, what she said. he had he was gonna fold Bella up. Listen, the moral of the story is, ladies, you can move on and go have somebody uh, who is not taken, but you should just not. You should just wait on this man to break up with his girlfriend. I promise he'll do it. Break up with your girlfriend because I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, he'll break up with her one day. Just wait. 
That's crazy. Oh. You don't want to no, know. <laughs> like downfall. Just wait. No. It's fine. Just wait. The, the thing is that some. Okay, this is my question to you because I know the answer. Do you believe that sometimes you're dating someone and then you meet your soulmate? Of course. What? Yeah. <laughs> don't don't let the don't let the person you're dating cut stop you from meeting the love of your life. Okay. <laughs> like you should be open to a new experiences. Okay. <laughs> but don't cheat. Just don't just cheat. Break up. Don't cheat. Just break up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take a break. Take a break. And uh, that's what Arvin did. Arvin said, no text, no nothing until I break up with Emily. I'm sure Bella been on his mind way too much. He texts her every day. She yeah. says, every day he sends me a cute emoji for no reason. This man basically was cheating. He didn't do nothing, but he, like, he was already laying the foundation. Because why are you sending one single emoji every day to this girl? Like, why you have a girlfriend? What is that about? Mm -hmm. So, Arvin was already, already trying to make his move. He ends up breaking up with Emily and telling Bella. And Bella is grinning from ear to ear. She is so happy about the downfall of this man's relationship. But we don't know that he broke up with her to get with mm -hmm. Bella. We just know that they're broken up. Um, I like Arvin. I like yeah. Arvin. Is I it time? Do. Is it time for Bella to be with her 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 like in game relationship for sex live with college girls. Is this the guy he's good? She's gonna be dating. Is this the in game? Right. Is this our Ben? Um, here's the thing. I'm not a hundred percent because we only are getting one more season. Right. I so believe. this is it. We don't have a lot. But it more might to go. be. So it might be because we're already at, at episode four of so season this, three. So this could be. This yeah. could be. Bella's last I, like, just I think don't we see might it. have a will they won't you know like a little bit yeah. more drama like there, there has to be it's Bella she's gonna they gotta break up. up they gotta break yeah. up this one or something to then they will get back together at the end yeah so you think this is a, like okay put a pin in it right now put a flag on it you know Arvin what is our guy oh yeah me planting the flag which might be a yeah. felon um <laughs> but yeah it might be or I don't put it past Mindy, right, to fully introduce us to a completely new a, person next season. New skinny white man with glasses. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? The Eric. guy from the, the cotillion or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he'll, Eric, he'll be back. Right? I think that's his name. I, yeah. I, yeah. What do you think? I like Arvid. I like Arvid. Yeah. I, like Arvin. Mm -hmm. I, wanna, I really I like Arvid for Bella. Yeah. I like him in general. He seems nice. And yeah, he be rocking yeah, yeah. The, the Urban Outfitters uh, purple jacket. That, I was like, hey, I see you. He got a little drip. He got a little drip. <laughs> No, I like that. Do you think Whitney, Isaiah is Whitney's? No, no. Right? Like, well, that is, uh, no, I don't know. No. I right? think Whitney needs a storyline, but I hope it's not just a man. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. No, not for Whitney. Uh, yeah. I like Arvin. I, Isaiah, I'm indifferent to Isaiah, but I don't like, I'm not rooting for it. And then Eli, I know that him and Kimberly. Oh, and impossible. That's nothing. That's nothing. That's, nothing. That's, nothing. That's stop. Stop it. Stop shenanigans. No. Yeah. I wonder. So, Whitney has to end up single because she just has too so? much juice. And she got so much going for her. Like, really? We going okay. Yeah, we'll see. But no. Nah, Kimberly I'm thinking, might end up with that Cooper. Oh yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, it's gonna be ridiculous. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Y'all tell us. Do you think who's end game? Have we, right. met yet? Have we met the end game yet? That's the question. Yep. Let's see. But that's it. Right? Mm -hmm. That wraps yep. up our coverage of season three. Uh, sorry, season three, episodes three and four of Sex Lives of the College Girls. We yeah. did it. Um, we'll be back in two weeks with the next few episodes. Uh, so listen, bear with us. I know because we got a tweet saying, listen, we wish we were covering weekly. And why is Mindy putting us up during the holidays? Right. Right. What are we doing? We can't. We, listen, we would love to cover it weekly. Yes. But you drop it episodes on Thanksgiving and Christmas is wild. And so it's kind of like, yep. and then like, you know, the Jewish holidays are coming as well. New Year's Eve is coming as well. Yep. This is it's jam packed, lady. Like we can't we can't do it, Mindy. So uh, we're trying to keep up with the best we can. But thank y'all for yes. listening. We love the comments. Yeah. Shout out to all y'all in the comments. And y'all yeah. have been showing so much love. Thank you. Yeah, Seriously, we love we're you. so grateful. Um, yes. And yeah, leave us a five-star review on the We Know Scripted feed, please. Mm -hmm. Let please. them know we're here and right. that y'all are listening. We need it, okay? We need it. And with mm -hmm. that, is it, if there's nothing else, Chappelle, where can the people find you? 
Recapkickback.com is where my podcasting is done. G and I are still covering Abbott Elementary. We just recorded our pre- our mid-season finale, winter episodes of Abbott. So that should be up on the YouTube page uh, on recapkickback.com's YouTube page, youtube.com slash at recapkickback. Um, me, Mari, and Ty recently talked about biggest heist ever. We talked about the Jay-Z allegations, and we talked about some of the other black entertainment news of the week. But we got more holiday content coming your way as well on recap kickback and uh yeah we got a lot going on over there so make sure you check it out and subscribe to the podcast and on all social media platforms at recap kickback what about you sasha yes um of course i'm still covering all the pop culture celebrity gossip over on mess magnets so check that out on messmagnets.com if you want to know what something's trending if you want to know more about rami my papoose lavina and i this week talked all about it and we talked about selena gomez's taco bell proposal question mark so check Mm. that out and everything else over on mess magnets or messmagnets.com um yeah and over here uh check out tv for real with mike bloom and for everything else um i'm on blue sky you know yeah yeah, find me on blue sky and we'll keep talking uh because some of y'all definitely wrote uh to me about sex lives of college girls on blue sky as well so so we we're always ready to chat with y'all about this Mm -hmm. stuff so thank you again for listening and we'll see you soon bye